next thing now is following a few rearrangements in the program is our second keynote speaker, Derek Goodwin, from who's head of uh, global entrepreneur programs at UKTI. Um, and following that, we have a, a further networking session uh, with the coffee upstairs. So, Derek. Good afternoon everyone. I guess I should say hello to the Brits and ni hao to the Chinese in the room, to our Chinese friends. Um, when I saw I was last on today, I must admit, um, I did get a little bit worried that as the last speaker got up, everybody would walk out. It reminded me of a, a former colleague who was the, the, the second to last speaker at a conference in Denmark met a few years ago. It gets very, and it was in the winter when it gets very dark um, quite early. And there were about 200 people at the start of the day, and the numbers kept dwindling and dwindling and dwindling and, until he got up. And there was one person in the audience, and um, he said, um, I guess there's no really, really no point in, in me talking uh, from here. Why don't we go and just talk about it in the bar? And the guy said, well, I would, but I'm the next speaker. <laughs> um, anyway, I must say, I'm delighted to be here today at what's obviously been a tremendous event. Um, providing a showcase for developing Anglo-Chinese relationships in the field of enterprise and investment. I think we all agree that the world we'll live, uh, we live in has fewer and fewer boundaries. As such, it's in all our best interests to see greater interaction and mutual collaboration between key technology networks in our two countries. This should go some way to supporting the longer term development of quality business environments for early stage technology companies, thereby providing the economic benefits to both our national and regional economies. Indeed, uh, the, the providing economic spillovers and economic benefits to the UK is, is the, uh, the aim of the, the program that I, I run and, and have uh, run for four years. Uh, some colleagues in the audience. I'll go into a little bit more detail about that later on because obviously standing here I've got to give uh, an, ad, an ad for our own, um, for our program. Um, it won't be as lucid as articulate as some of the previous speakers but, uh, but I'll do my best. But our, our raise on debt is to help early stage technology businesses from around the world become global businesses from a UK hub. Um, and I'll go into a little bit of detail as I said about why that why that's the case and what our value proposition is later. Um, today, obviously, a major part of today has been innovation. And um, I think it's impossible not to be impressed by the fantastic inventions that China's been responsible for. I was uh, doing some research yesterday, just prepping myself for this, and was amazed. I, I knew that China invented most things, but uh, just just to name a few, gunpowder, paper, printing, the compass, toilet paper, matches, dry docks, piston pumps, the blast furnace, cast iron, the iron plough, the wheelbarrow, suspension bridges, the parachute, razor relief maps, propellers, the crossbow, cannon, rockets, and the multi-stage rocket. They're just a few um, of what is undoubtedly an incredible legacy. And, and we are now seeing China looking to reassume its position as a global technology leader. But what are the challenges today that we both, we both um, have to meet? And how can we ensure that we can all play our part in developing and sharing in, in this prosperity? Well, let's have a look at the landscape. Globalisation is certainly changing the world economic map on an unprecedented scale. And over the last few years, we've worked with entrepreneurs around the world. And, I, and we can say, i.e. UKTI and the Global Entrepreneur Programme, and I think people will agree, that entrepreneurship is now changing from a regional to a global phenomenon. Entrepreneurs look beyond national borders now, the, uh, the most attractive sources of capital, talent and market opportunity. Technology startups aspire to become multinationals more or less from day one. I like to call them micro-nationals. 
And we at the UKTI have responded to this by establishing the Global Entrepreneur Programme. And it's thanks to this unique programme that we have recruited experienced entrepreneurs and technologists and financiers ourselves. Ostensibly, how do you find entrepreneurs that want to become global businesses? Um, I'm from Inward Investment. Uh, I've done FDI for a number of years now, specifically fo focusing on medium and large size corporates. And they're easy to find because they knock on your door, they want money, they want grants, etc. But early stage uh, technology businesses, entrepreneur led companies, don't have time to go around knocking on doors. They don't have time to go to trade shows. So, how do you find them? So the best we, the, the way we decided was to get our own entrepreneurs to do it for us. And um, as I said, we've got some very impressive entrepreneurs on our team. We've got uh, some, a couple of VCs on our team. And um, so we, we are very, very close to validation of technologies that we find as well as um, business planning, etc., through our VC networks. And so what we want to do is create global companies headquartered in the UK. So you might say, well, why would they do that? Well, we obviously promote the UK as the best location for technology businesses with global ambition. Um, and global ambition and the, the need to, the understanding that international markets is where they need to be. So why should we be? Why should we promote ourselves as a base for these companies? Well, the UK offers, the UK does have a number of advantages. Firstly, it's that our time zone is perfect for a strategic location um, to access Europe, which is twice the size of the North American market and and um, increasing. And then, of course, the North American market itself. There aren't that many countries that can do that. Um, our corporate and intellectual property law is, is regarded as the best around the world. We have competitive tax rates, right? so and I don't want people bombarding me with questions about non-DOMs and CGT, so I'm not a tax spokesman, but I can say we have competitive tax rates. And a general supportive business environment. Um, the World Bank last year, they do a study each year on uh, business-friendly environments. And out of the 145 countries that they surveyed, the UK came out sixth. So we must be doing something right. Um, in, interestingly as well, historically, technology startups have, when, when they've looked to raise money in order to become international, historically they've either listed locally, which tends to be too early, um, and, and so therefore defeats the object of, of, liquidity, of the liquidity event. And secondly, or, or secondly, they all routes headed to, to the West Coast. Um, and obviously that's not, that shouldn't be the route for every country, every company. And we know of horror stories on both of those examples. So what we've done in the Global Entrepreneur Programme is, is promote the UK as an option for that. Um, Utilising those advantages that I mentioned previously. And I think that Wherever we've been in the world, and we started in North America, we were into, we've moved into Australia, New Zealand, Israel, um, as I said, US, Canada, and India. And we've done deals out of France, Russia, Finland, uh, many, many countries. When we say we are providing an option, now, in, in, in terms of size, etc., obviously, we're only a very small compared to Silicon Valley. But early stage businesses like the thought of coming to the UK, they, they feel more comfortable. So that's what we that's how we built our value proposition. And around that proposition, obviously you have to have something that you can offer. It's all very well saying only oh, we're a great location. But as I said, going back, we, we have a team of entrepreneurs in, in our locations and a team here in the UK. Um, Providing unrivaled assistance. No other government actually provides what we provide for nothing. Various governments can uh, often offer things to entrepreneurs, which tends to be a blank check, but they don't give them the ongoing assistance. We don't give money. We give much something which is much more, I think, much more beneficial, which is um, the, the experience and expertise of successful entrepreneurs who acts as mentors for our clients. So what do we do? Well, we can we assist 
um, we assist our companies with building their management teams. Um, companies need to have a strong management team. That's one of the key things when you're trying to raise money is to have a good, experienced management team. And through our networks, our global networks, we can access the right types of people. We can introduce businesses to the right networks, both in terms of professional service providers as well as early stage finances, etc. And our network also encompasses grants because we're part of government, so we can access the various offices around the UK that provide grants. There's not a lot of money out there, but there is some, there is some money out there. 